schedule in August, and this is probably the best fight card top to bottom. With all the intrigue, Dre, as to how Isaac Dogbay will look now. It is all the way back to spring of 2019 when he suffered that beatdown with Emmanuel Navarrete. What do you expect with the trainer change to Barry Hunter? Well, we're going to see, Joe. I mean, you can't predict something like that. A lot has changed in the life and career of Isaac Dogbay in the last 14 months. You just talked about a trainer change, and not just any trainer change. He removed his father. They're still on good terms. But Barry Hunter and his team is trying to put the pieces, the psychological pieces of Isaac Dogbay back together. Well, one of the things that I noticed, first of all, was that you didn't hear no nil, nil. You didn't hear that this time around. So, you know, Isaac Dogbay is seemingly different at the moment. And another thing that I'm noticing is, is that he's actually starting behind the jab. He never would do that before. You're right. He came right out and doubled it up, that left hand. And to your point, Tim, there was an emotional component. There was almost something that they drew upon going back to the traditions of Ghana when he was with his dad, just the ring walk in the pre-fight. So much was built upon the motivation, the call to arms, and you don't have that now. It's a, perhaps a more refined professional version of Dog Bay focused on what's gonna happen inside the ropes. Yeah, Tessa saying that, I mean, fighters, I mean, we, we brainwash ourselves, man. I'm not going to lie, especially the week of the fight. Even, you know, when we go back and we hit the reset button and, you know, get a new team, we don't know if it's really going to work until we get in there and fight and actually fight. And so tonight we're going to see if all the changing and all the things that he'd done made a difference. And that difference being what happens in terms of his fundamentals, his technique, his execution of a game plan. As we talked about, we, we would visit with him many times prior to fights. It was such an emotional buildup, and Marcus talked about delivering on a prophecy. But right now, the focus is right there between the ropes as he lands a right hand against Avalos. The right hand from Dog Bay. Just a very, yeah, just a patient Isaac Dog Bay right now. He's not in a rush. He's fighting eight rounds. He's used to fighting 10 and 12 rounds. But just patient tonight, trying to get his feet under him and trying to see what those punches feel like with those small gloves on. 25 years old, and it already feels like a lifetime of experience in the ups. You know, one thing I want to say is that, you know, I want to tell you folks at home is that a fighter's confidence is probably the most important asset you need as a fighter because the confidence is what controls the brain. You know, I wonder where the confidence level lies for Isaac Dogbay, you know, as he's fighting, you know, and as he continues to, you know, march forward and, and, and dominate, I think his confidence level will shoot up. But taking that two beatings by Navarrete, that had to be hard to come back from. Bernardo, curious as to how that first round visit with new trainer Barry Hunter went. He was quite pleased. He said, hey, for a guy who's been off for a year, the rhythm was actually pretty good. And if he keeps operating behind the jab, I think we can get him out early. So the thing about losing your confidence is, you know, it takes time to get it back. I can remember getting knocked down early in my career and telling my coach, I don't want to fight on TV. I'd rather fight in off TV bouts because I'm young. I'm trying to figure it out. It's the first time the media ever turned on me. And it takes time. Your trainer is somebody that has to help you believe again. Barry Hunter's the right guy for that. And it's just about Isaac Dogbeck getting in there, feeling those punches, realizing he can still take a punch and that he still has that devastating power. You know what that confidence do is it fuels the connection with the warrior within ourselves. That's what confidence does for us as fighters. And we're going to begin to see it as this fight continues to, you know, press forward. And Isaac Dogbay, the more success he has, I'm pretty sure, the more he's going to let his hands go. Been targeting that body pretty well here in round number two. Freak! Take your time to touch. Let's go. Right uppercut from Avalos. 
And utilizing the jab himself. Tess, one of the hardest things that I see that's going to be hard for I just Dog Bay to break is he leans forward. He leans forward over that front knee. But if Dog Bay, if he understands why he leans forward and kind of set a trap for his opponent because Avalos is looking for that right uppercut. He knows it's available. He landed it about 30 seconds ago. Good steady pressure from Isaac Dogbane. Mm. Mm. Recent champion Isaac Dogbay, Tim utilizing that left hand well. Yeah, but this is what the jab sets up. You know, you get your opponent used to you know, seeing the jab, and then you come with a lead left hook, and that's what Isaac Dogbay does right here. Comes with a lead left hook. But one thing I have to mention, you do not want to be throwing a hook straight from the middle. Maybe jabbing hook, you know, blind your man. Give him something to look at to anticipate and then come around with the hook. In front. Be lucky your right hand wasn't thrown at that moment. Dog Bay in tonight with the former 122-pound, 126-pound world title challenger, Chris Avalos. In 2017, he went after a featherweight belt and lost to Leo Santa Cruz. In 2015, it was Carl Frampton who bested him at junior featherweight. And in 2015, he was in against Oscar Valdez, who we look forward to seeing the undefeated Valdez in our main event. And he was KO'd back in Vegas as well. Chris Avalos told us yesterday in the fighter meeting that he wanted to outbox Isaac Dogbay. He doesn't have success outboxing. He had, he's had the most success in these first two rounds when he attacks Isaac Dogbay, especially a fighter in Dogbay who's coming off of a knockout loss. So I just think Chris Avalos needs to be himself, just like he did right there, trust his ability, and, and, and go for it, you know, and let the chips fall where they may. Well, you took the word right out of my mouth. I was thinking the same thing, Dre. You know, we as fighters, we, we go back to the drawing board and we think we need to change some things. He said he's been working on his defense, but right now he needs to be working on offense because I see the same thing you see, champ. Put the pressure on Isaac Dog Bay. You don't allow a fighter who is trying to find his confidence, you don't allow him to find it. You have to let him know and remind him of that last round that he fought right away, try to hurt him, try to get his attention and take him back to that bad place. Avalos does that in spots, but he hasn't done it consistently. Stop! That's what I'm talking about. Don't do that. Let's go. Look at this man. A fighter that's been out of the ring for about a year or so, it's going to take a few rounds for them to warm up. So, to Dre's point, you want to you want to apply some pressure on him. You want to test that chin early. They haven't been hit by a big shot in over a year. Let's go. Around the fourth round, we're going to see Isaac Dogbay. He's going to probably start getting in his rhythm around the fourth round because usually that's how that's how long it takes for you to get your sea legs back. The return of Isaac Dogbay coming to the end of round number three stage of his career. 29 years old, 27-0, 21 knockouts, and looking to get through tonight cleanly and set up what'll be an all-out war against Miguel Burchelt for the WBC title at 130 pounds. Two guys from Hermosillo, Mexico, who when they're out doing road work, they bump into each other. They see each other out to eat. The guys who have great appreciation and a friendship, but they only know one way, and when they get into the ring, it will be fireworks, but right now Valdez has to get through Velez tonight. Round number four here of our opener with Dog Bay and Avalos. Bernardo. You know, Felipe Avalos, Chris's father, said, look, I want you to throw punches with bad intention. That uppercut is right there. Most importantly, when you hit him, move. Don't just stand there. Yeah, Tim, you noticed how available the uppercut is with the five foot four Dog Bay who leans forward over that front knee. 
way he leans forward because he likes to go down to the body. That's just something that I used to do. I used to lean forward as well, but I knew I was available for the uppercut, so it's easy to set up guys when they go for that uppercut. If you don't throw it at the right distance, you can leave yourself open yourself. So, for a left hook or a right hook. Here you see once again Isaac Dogbay having success when he attacks. When Chris Abelos goes backwards, he gets hit. He needs to go forward and let his hands go and push Isaac Dogbay back. Hands free, hands free. You want that? Let's go. Work. No. Step to your right hand now. Step to your right hand. I'm all for Chris Avalos and his team wanting him to use defense. He can still be aggressive offensively and be defensive minded and responsible after he throws, but to just be exclusively defensive, it's going to allow Isaac Dogg to get confidence and start to open up just like you saw right there. Having success to the body again and then comes over the top with a right hand. And there's another right hand, Timmy. The body work is what's gonna gonna end this fight. If Dog Bay is gonna stop Avalos, it's gonna be to the body. About 15 seconds ago, Dog Bay landed a left hook to the body, and Avalos, you can see his face. He didn't like it. There it no, is. No, he took a, he took a step back and it just came again. And now it's a snapping jab, and Dog Bay lands another right hand. This has been a dominating fourth round for Isaac Dog Bay. range but he also had some moments in close beautiful slip right there slip but he stayed low he didn't raise up into a punch got a beautiful right hook to the body and you see the reaction from Chris Avalos Isaac Dog Bay needs more of that this round you look at the body punches and you will see Dog Bay finding plenty of success in that last round he landed 12 body punches 26 power punches overall Right now, I would Stop. tell my fighter Isaac Dogbay, if I was in his corner, walk him down. Walk down Avalos. Test him, beat him down to the body. Because I can see him wilting away slowly. Stop! Get your head up. You okay? All right. Look at all. Get him up. Get him up. Chris Avilos is a tough fighter. He's a veteran. He's been him around. Let's he's, he's, he's fought two championships. He's lost those two championships, but he's tough. The way you slow a fighter like Avilos down is to continue to hit him to the body like we're calling for and like the corner of Dog Bay is calling for. That, that's the intimate combat right there where you can feel the sweat of the opponent. You can hear him breathing, but you're willing to stay in that place to get the right shot in and inflict the right amount of damage. Dog Bay has to stay focused on the body right now, not the head. There's a left hook upstairs. Then he digs to the body with a left hand. Every time he does that, Joe, he gets a reaction from Avilos. So that tells me I need to stay there. Right hand throws him off balance. Dog base steps to him, looks for that left hook to the body again. Time. Over there. Come here. One point, low blow. One point, low blow. One point, low blow. Knock it off. Go hit him low. Point deduction here in round five against Dog Bay. Yeah, I, I don't think I saw the first warning. I don't remember the first warning. We got one again. There you go. Got one one time. Now change the speed, Isaac. Take it back to the average. Change the speed. There you go. So what the coach is asking for, Barry, he's saying change the speed up. You know, you want to change your speed up and alter your, your cadence of your punches. So that way you can't be timed. There you go. Stop. Dog Bay's return going well. So look to be on the belt line to me. Come on, 
Yeah, everything is op 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 opposite in boxing. There you go. You see the right hand thrown, and you see Isaac Dogbay slip to his left and land that body shot. And there it is. That's right on the belt line. That don't look very low to me. It's just teeter, uh, maybe, possibly. But for me, I would, I would, that's clearly on the belt line. That's it. No talk. Double the jab, this in the right hand. Dogbay right now has abandoned his jab. That's the reason why he can't get close to Avalos. If he uses his jab, he'll be able to get in position to be able to land those hard body shots. Jab, nice right hand over the top. Boxing beautifully. Stay to the chest. think Chris Avilos is ready to go. I'm not saying he's hurt right now, but I do believe if Isaac Dogbay steps up the pace and gets inside and rips those shots to the body with both hands and finishes up top, Chris Avilos is going to have a problem. you got to be able to read when your opponent is kind of just in there to survive. Right now, Avilos is surviving, and Dogbay's got to step it up. Trey, you're not alone in messaging that. Barry Hunter in Dogbay's corner also believes that. As we were listening to him earlier. Well, if you see it, right, if you see it as a coach, you want to call it out. And this is also sort of the rebuilding process for Isaac Dogbay, reminding him when you're in these moments, it's okay to attack. You're safe. Let your hands go. Believe in yourself. And that's what you hear from Coach Barry Hunter right now. Just like that. I like it. Slowly but surely, he'll, I think he'll get that confidence back. You know, I'm seeing it right now. He's enjoying himself in there. He's boxing beautifully right now, switching southpaw, feeling himself, feeling good. This is easy for Isaac Dog, babe, but yes, you're right. He can step it up and get Avalos out of there if he wants to. But right now, he's just having some fun. He is mature. He is thoughtful. He has a master game plan that he wants to put forth in his career. You know, Tess, very subtly, we see a a fighter that come into those fighter means that just have it all together, you know? And I'm talking about from, from the boxing, I'm talking about from the mindset, the mentality. Like, he seems like a fighter that has it all, you know? And he seems like a fighter that, you know, could be a future world champion. And according to trainer Freddie Roach, he says, hey, I give this guy high praises. I believe he's going to be a future world champion at 140 pounds. So he's coming up next for now round seven, scheduled for eight with Isaac Dogbay and Chris Avalos. Stop. See, for me, I'm not in a rush right now for Isaac Dogbay. I, I like what he's doing. He's working on his skill set. You know, he's showing some things that he's been working on. You know, he has to trust in this skill set. So that's what he's doing right now. You know, not getting hit, not taking reckless, you know, easy shots, not giving no, no, no. easy shots away. Taking his time and trying to break down Avalos the right way. And Tim, I like the rounds for Isaac Dogbay too. And, you know, it's not a bad thing for him, but yeah. a knockout for him is going to do more for his psyche than a decision win. And you hear Coach Barry calling for it. I'm calling for it because it's there. You see the body language of Avilos. And it's not that he's quit or given up, but he's kind of taking things down a gear. And he's just, you know, accepting the fact that, that Dogbay is going to win this fight and he just wants to survive. When a guy wants to survive, you got to step up the pace and let him know that that's not going to happen tonight. He let Avalos off the hook about a round ago. Avalos is still in this fight right now, and he's gaining more momentum right now as we speak. I think you gave 
Dog Bay, the, the key let's go, let's go. to get Abilos out of there, which has come behind a strong, stiff jab. He's already shorter than Abilos by four inches, so he's low to the ground. And get nasty on the inside and rip both your hands, finish to the head, reset and do it again. And you're going to see Abilos rip because with the, the few shots that Dog Bay has landed downstairs, Abilos had a reaction. Let's go. Double up. Let go. Hands free. Don't relax. In front. Don't relax. You see right there where you saw Isaac Dog Bay pull up. As soon as he pulled up, he got hit with a shot. See, you have to stay compact and stay in a good defensive position so that way it doesn't happen. Any time you give up and give a little space, you're leaving yourself open for offense from your opponent. For the year candidate. Back home in Accra, Ghana against Cesar Juarez. And then he comes to Philly in a fight on ESPN. He shocks all of us with his bravado and his charm. And then what he did in the ring against Jesse Magdaleno and winning the title in Philly. And got up off the canvas to do so. Has the back-to-back -back fights with Navarrete, the second of which in the rematch. Navarrete takes his title. And then in the rematch, the utter beatdown. And now all that time away from May of 2019 to now going through trainers coming together with Barry Hunter, and this the comeback fight in his career. Eighth and final round here against Avalos. He's been in complete control, Dog Bay has. Good try. Keep chopping him. Stop it. Look at him, stab, stab, stab. You can see Isaac Dog Bay raising the tempo, set up the pace, trying to be a little bit more consistent with his shots, trying to take out Avalos. There's the right uppercut from Dog Bay. Wide sweeping right hand, short left hook on the inside. Goes back to the body. Alvos backs up for a moment before he comes forward and clinches. And you hear Russell Moore hey, saying, show me something. Tessie came forward and clinched, and then what did uh, Dog Bay do? He gave him his hands. You can't allow your hands to be taken by your opponent. Bring your hands inside and close to you, the closer he gets to you, so that way he can't grab your arms. You hear Coach Barry telling Dog Bay, get him off you, get him off you. In other words, don't let him rest. Don't let him recover on the inside, like you're saying, Tim. Push him off of you, keep pressing the issue in hopes that they can get a stoppage here in this eighth round. Lead left hook. Take it. Final minute. Let's see if he can close the show here. Hunter calling for the offensive attack. Three punch combination from Dog Bay. Now corners him, sweeping right.